getting my comment pinned here as y'all coming in. Shout yourselves out in the comments section. Let me know where y'all are checking in from. We are getting started in about 45 seconds. Hope everybody's having a great day. Great start to your week. If you are watching this live, we are close to a new month. Make sure what's going on, Stars Tina. Good afternoon or good morning. If you are if you are watching this live, we are close to a new month. So that means you need to be putting in your goals, writing down your goals for next month. We got a new one coming up. So make sure you are setting your goals for next month, checking your goals for the current month, seeing what needs to carry over, what needs to change, what's the next step, looking at your goals for the year, cross-referencing. And we're going to get into what we need to get into in one second. We got Jersey girl living in NC. Shout out to Jersey. Shout out to Philadelphia. Shout out to the tri-state area. Shout out to Philly, Jersey, Delaware, New York, the East Coast, West Coast, Africa, Antarctica, Australia, Asia, Europe, Antarctica. I said Antarctica already. I'm missing one. South America, North America. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dre Baldwin. Many know me as Dre all day. I'm a former nine-year pro athlete, author of 33 books and done four TEDx talks. I created this whole brand called Work On Your Games, all about taking the mental tools to help athletes get to the top 1% in sports. And what we do is translate those tools over from the sports world to the business world to help professionals like yourselves perform at a higher level, be more consistent, and make more money. So if you want to make more money in your business, understand everything that I share here, even if the subject is not always directly about money, you apply these tools, this will help you make more money, either directly or indirectly. So today, what we're going to talk about is how to keep mediocrity out of your life. Now, why is this something that you want to do? Why do you want to stay away from mediocrity? Even the most people probably, you know, you would just hear it and say, I don't want to be mediocre, right? You don't want to be like, uh, you don't want to be in the middle, because right? that's what mediocre, mediocrity is. Because It's the root word there is the median. Median is kind of in the middle. All right? It's just like everybody else is amongst the masses is average. Most people don't want to be it because of that. And there are several other reasons why. First of all, in the business world, the professional world where money is being exchanged, nobody pays for mediocrity. All right? You cannot make a lot of money being mediocre. If you are mediocre, it's not that you won't make any money, but you'll be in the middle. You are amongst all the you're amongst the masses. And when you're amongst the masses, your value is not very high. Why? Because you are a commodity. And a commodity is something that doesn't matter if I get this one, this one or this one. I'm pretty much getting the exact same thing, even if it's not true. If you are viewed as a commodity, then people will treat you like a commodity, which means your value is not very high. You don't have a strong negotiating position, which means you pretty much have to take what you are offered. You don't really get to you're not in a position to negotiate. You have to get what you accept. And there are three levels of money earning. There's accepting, negotiating, and demanding. You can't get to the demanding level or the negotiating level if you're looked at as a commodity. Only thing you can do is accept. For example, when I worked at McDonald's when I was in high school, I wasn't in a position to negotiate a salary. I was in a position to accept a salary. When you are looked at as mediocre or when your performance is mediocre or you are only able to communicate in such a way that you are seen or perceived as mediocre, only thing you can do is only thing you can do is accept what is offered to you. And most of the time in life, we want more than what is just being offered to us. Now, whether you actually are taking actions to get to a level that's higher than what's what you have to accept or you're not, most of us want it. Now, some people are actually doing things to get there. Some people are just talking about it and doing nothing, but everybody wants it. Everybody wants to get to a level where you can get more out of life than just what somebody offers you or what somebody hands you. You don't want the basic level. You want the higher level thing, whatever it is. And one of the ways to get to that higher level thing is you got to get mediocrity out of your life. Now, how do you get mediocrity out of your life? There are several things you could do. I could probably give you a hundred different uh, strategies and tactics to keep mediocrity away from you. But today we're going to focus on one specific tactic. Oh, this is not a tactic. Actually, let me back up one specific strategy, which is anchored to a principle and it is called standards. Standards. Standards is standards are the enemy of mediocrity. So if you don't ever want to be mediocre again in your life, you don't want any mediocrity taking place in your life. The most important thing you can do is set solid standards and actually live by the standards that you have set for yourself. Or if you have trouble coming up with standards for yourself, guess what you can do? You can go find someone who has already created and implemented some standards that might work for you. And then you can just borrow what they're already sharing or what they're already using and take their standards and implement them into your life. Now, why would you use somebody else's standards in life? The reason you would use another person's standards is because that person has already or is already achieving or living the thing that you want to achieve or live. So if you see 
if you want to get in really good shape fitness wise in whatever way, maybe you're trying to lose weight, maybe you're trying to gain weight, maybe you want to get good at a sport, maybe you're trying to get six pack abs or you want to be able to do uh, more pull ups on the pull up bar, whatever it is. When you find someone who is already doing that, they've already gotten to that level, figure out what the standards are that they live by that allows them to perform at that level. Then you could take their standards, apply it to what you do, and now you'll be able to do the same thing. All, right? all you're doing is borrowing from people who have already achieved the outcome. Good news for all of us is that damn near anything you want to achieve, there's someone out there who has already achieved it. And even if you're trying to achieve something that nobody's ever done before, there are people out there who have at least taken the steps towards where you want to be. They've at least taken the step. So let's say you want to be the first person in the world who is worth, I don't know, what's the richest person in the world is worth how much money? Let's just say the richest person, I don't know, is worth $150 billion. You want to be worth a trillion dollars. You want to be the first human on the planet worth $1 trillion. Nobody's done that before. So you might be saying, well, Dre, how do I, how can I model somebody if there's nobody out there who's ever done this particular thing? Here's what you do. Go find someone, find a person who's gotten the closest to that. Model them so you can at least get to that level and then figure out how you can take pieces from other people, put them all together into kind of like a puzzle and then make it all work together. So even if you're trying to reach something that's never been done before and most of you are not doing it, most of the time we're trying to do something that has been done. Maybe you don't know about the person who's done it, but somebody out there has done it. You can borrow standards from another person, apply them to your own life, and then you can get the outcome. Now, I make that sound very simple. But this is not always easy. It is simple. What I just said is 100% true, and that is basically the whole thing. It's not easy because living up to standards that someone else is already living by, you may realize that it's not, as, it's not going to be as fun or as much of a party as it looks like from the outside looking in. So you see someone who's in great physical shape, and you're not in great physical shape. You're in mediocre shape. For you to live by their standards is going to be a lot harder than it looks from the outside looking in because they don't eat the food that you eat. All right? They don't work out they work out twice as much as you do all right they might do they might go twice as hard in the gym as you go all right they are not as they don't let themselves off the hook as often as you let yourself off the hook so living by another person's ways and another person's standards is a shortcut for you getting to your outcomes however living by another person's ways and standards is not going to be as easy as you think it is so with all that said I'm going to talk here today about how to use standards to fight mediocrity because standards are the enemy of mediocrity. So any of you who never want to be mediocre again in your life, or if you are mediocre right now and you don't want to be mediocre anymore, you want to, you want to move out of mediocrity town and you want to never come back and you want to turn your back on it and never look back. Here's what you need to do. I'm going to share a couple points with you about this concept of how standards are the enemy of mediocrity. Point number one, when you raise the bar, Whenever you raise the bar of standards in a group for an individual person or in a community, anywhere, anytime you raise the bar of standards, in other words, you make the standards higher, which means everybody has to perform at a higher level in order to be accepted. What happens is all the losers get eliminated. When you raise the bar of a performance, all the losers are eliminated. They go away. They disappear. So, for example, if you go into a sales organization and the quota was everybody needs to make one sale per week. That's the quota. And you got 50 people working there and the quota is one sale per week. And the only way you can keep your job is by making at least one sale a week. If I come in there and I say, all right, we got a new quota. New quota is you got to make three sales per week. One sale per week is no longer acceptable. If you only make one sale a week, you're getting fired. You got to make at least three sales per week. You got one month to get up to quota. Anybody a month from now who is not making at least three sales per week, you will be immediately terminated. What's going to happen when I do that? What's going to happen is the low level performers, the people who only want to make one sale per week and they don't want to push themselves to make three sales per week, they will quit. I'm going to have to fire them. They'll quit because they're going to know they're going to see the writing on the wall that they're about to get fired because they didn't perform. They will find their way to the exit. I want to have to kick them out. It might be a handful of people I got to fire, but most of them, they'll fire themselves. They'll quit. The whole point is this. Let me give you another example. Let's say I'm on a, let's say I'm a coach of a sports team. And on the sports team, we have a certain conditioning level that every player has to be at. You got to be able to do you got to be able to do this many sprints in this much time. And I change that quota and I say you got to do that many sprints, but I'm lowering the time. So instead of instead of you got 30 seconds to run up and down the court three times now, you know, what? you only got 25 seconds. And anybody who can't hit it in 25 seconds, you will not have a uniform. You won't be on the roster. You'll get kicked off the team. You're not playing in any of the games. When I change that quota, what's going to happen is all the performers who don't want it, live up to that level, they will quit. They'll quit the team. They'll stop showing up to practice. I'll give you, uh, 
actually a real life example of something that I'm thinking of as I'm talking about it. Where I come from in Philadelphia, there's this high school uh, called Simon Gratz High School. And I remember reading about this in the newspaper. This is back when we used to read newspapers. That when the basketball team had tryouts, here's what the coach would do. For the first day of tryouts, when they had basketball team tryouts, what do people expect when you go to tryouts for a basketball team? That everybody's going to be playing basketball and you're going to get to show your skills and the coach is going to decide who's good and who's not and pick the team accordingly. That's usually how it works. But on this team, according to the story that I read, what the coach would do is the first day of basketball tryouts, they didn't even use the basketball. All they did was do a whole bunch of sprints and suicides and all kinds of conditioning drills, just running, running, running. The whole practice, all they did. And the coach said, all right, I'll see everybody tomorrow. And he didn't cut anybody. He didn't kick anybody off the team. So I'll see everybody tomorrow. And then the next day, he did the same thing all over again. Didn't even bring the basketballs out. All they did was just run, run, run for another whole day. Then they did this every day for like a whole week. All they did was just run and do sprints and suicides and conditioning drills for a whole week straight. And this is supposed to be basketball tryouts. They never even touched the basketball. The coach had no idea who was good at basketball, who wasn't. All he did was make them run, run, run. And here's what happened after a week. Anybody want to guess what happened after a week? After a week, people just stopped coming to basketball tryouts. They just stopped coming. He didn't cut anybody. Coach never told anybody, you're cut, you can't play, you're not on the team. He didn't tell anybody that. All he did was just keep making them run every single day for practice. And after a week, there was only like 12 guys left. And he said, all right, you 12 guys, y'all are the basketball team. That's it. That was his whole tryout process. He didn't have to cut anybody. He didn't have to kick anybody off the team. He didn't even evaluate anybody's basketball skills. All he did was just make them do drills, conditioning drills, every single day to find out. And what the coach was really looking for was who has the discipline to keep showing up and do these things that aren't fun but are necessary to be successful in this game. And through that, he just kept his team based on who stayed. And here's the point. He set a certain bar of what you're going to have to do because any of you who's ever played a sport, especially a sport that involves running, like football or basketball, you know that there's running that's involved. That There's going to be a day in practice where the coach is going to make you do a whole bunch of running. I know this. I played basketball. So there were days, I don't care, high school, college, pro, there were days where we did a whole bunch of running that I didn't really feel like doing, and it was not fun, but you had to do it, and you knew this was just part of the game. What the coach was looking for was who has the discipline to keep showing up. And when he found the 12 guys who had the most discipline, that became his team. And he's, I guess he figured, I'll teach these dudes how to play basketball. As long as they got discipline, I can teach them anything. The whole point here is, folks, when you raise the bar of a standard, you will remove the losers. Anytime a bar of standards gets raised, the losers get eliminated. They go away. They disappear. So if you look around in any organization, any place in life where the standards are really high, where you have to perform at a really, really high level in order to be in the room and to stay in the room, you'll notice that there are no losers in the room. There are no mediocre people in the room. There are no average people in the room. Why? Because they can't get in. Because you have to perform at a certain level just to be in the room. They can't get in. They won't come in the room because the standards are so high, they just won't make it. And guess what happens with those folks? And here's the interesting thing about this, y'all. For any of you who's ever in a position where you have to choose people and you have to exclude some people and include other people, when you set the standards high enough, you won't have to kick anybody out. You won't have to have any uncomfortable conversations and let people know that they are not going to be a fit where you are. You won't ever have to do it. You know why you won't have to do it? Because when your standards are high enough, the mediocre people won't even bother trying to get in the room. They won't even bother coming. They won't even bother showing up. Because when they see what the standards are, they won't even, they'll just say, you know what, forget it. I'm not even trying. Give you an example. Those of you, give you another example. Uh, those of you who are in sales, and I can give you a thousand examples. So I'm, this is going to be the last one I give you for this point. Those of you who are in sales, when you are selling a product or a service, if you let people know what the, if you give people an idea at least of what the investment is going to be to work with you or to get into your program or course or whatever your situation happens to be, if you let them know what the minimum investment is or give them an idea at a ballpark of what they're going to have to invest to work with you, you will not have to deal with so many different people because the only people who are going to make it through the filters are the people who understand uh, what is going to cost them and they know that they'll be able to pay for it because if you don't let them know the thing is you gonna get a whole bunch of people coming through people who have no money people who have close to no money people who are just kicking the tires just trying to see what's going on people who are not serious you gonna get a whole bunch of those people coming through your situation because you haven't made it clear what the bar is see when you make it clear to people that there's a bar of standards and whether you do it directly by apps coming out and saying it overtly or you do it in an indirect way by just the way you present yourself, you let people know what you're about and what you're not about. 
I'll give you, and this connects to that example. So this is a sub example. Uh, if you go to a store like if you're ever in a mall or you go to, let's say, the design district, design district here in Miami, and you see the, the Christian Louboutin store, store or the Ferragamo store or the, the Gucci store, you can just tell when you walk past and you look in the window. Now, you only have to go in the store. You can just look through the window when you walk past the store. You can tell by the way that the store presents itself that the products inside of the store cost a certain amount of money. Can we agree? You can also understand that when you go past a Walmart and you look in the window at Walmart and you look at the kind of people walking in there and the kind of people walking out, you can tell that to buy stuff from there, it's going to cost you a certain amount of money too. There's different standards. And again, sometimes you can say it out loud. You can just say it. And sometimes it's, uh, it's covert. Just the way that you present yourself lets people know, all right, here's what I'm about. Here's what I'm not about. Here's the level you need to be at to deal with me. Here's the level. If you're below this level, don't even bother coming in here because this ain't for you. Someone has sent me an email the other day. Actually, I know this person. I'm not going to say who it is, but they sent an email and they were talking about how they, they're making an offer, this thing that they're going to do for people. And they said right there in the email, it says right in the email, because they talk about all the stuff they're going to do. Like, I'm making this offer. We're going to do this, this, and this for you if you're interested in this. And then they said at the end of the email, the investment for this is $50,000. That's what they said in the email. If you want this, it's $50,000. So if you're interested, reply to this email, let us know, and then we'll tell you what the next steps are. But they told you right there, it's $50,000. They didn't hide it. They didn't say go through the funnel. They didn't say watch the video first. They didn't say get on a call with us first. No, they said the investment is $50,000. So anybody who doesn't have $50,000, guess what's going to happen? They ain't responding. So the only people they're going to talk to are the people who know that they got to pay $50,000 and they want that thing. So guess what their, guess what their conversion rate is going to be on that email? Probably 100%. Now, it might not be a million people that come through. It might only be a handful of people, but every single person who comes through, they're probably going to sell to them. Why? Because they know exactly what they got to do. They know what the bar is. It's $50,000. Now, if you don't tell people what the bar is, now you're going to get some hit or miss. You're going to get some people who are good, some people who are not, because you didn't make it clear what the bar was. And sometimes there's value in that. I understand there is value in that. If you have multiple price points, that can make sense. But if you only got one price point, you can just tell people, look, it's $50,000. All right, so don't reply to this email unless you're ready to invest 50 grand. If you ain't got 50 grand, it's not for you. And that's a way of setting the bar. Everybody get what I'm saying? Now, on the other hand, the other side to this point, we're still on the first point here. When you lower the bar, you lose the winners. When you don't have standards or you have very low standards, high-level people don't want to be in that room. High-level people don't want to hang with losers. So understand something. The people who perform at a really high level set high standards for themselves and they want to be held to high standards and they want to associate with other people who are the same way. High level performers don't want to mix with low level non performers. So any of you, do you ever part of an organization where there are some high level people and they're being held to a certain standard and the standards get lowered so that Less qualified people can also be in a room and less accomplished people can also you know, get recognized. What's going to happen is the high level people are going to leave. They won't stick around because high level people don't want to intermingle with bums. So if you got some winners around you or you're a winner yourself, or do you want to hang with bums? You want to hang with losers? You want to hang with mediocre people? Probably not. Now, on the other hand, mediocre people, bums and losers, they do want to hang with high level people because that's the closest they ever going to get to being high level is hanging around people who are doing it because they don't want to hold themselves to the standard of being that. They want to hang with the high level people. The high level people don't want to hang with them. This is one of the problems that you see in society these days is that you see many organizations and many uh, places, institutions lowering the standards for what it takes to get to a certain point. And when you lower the standards, what happens is you invite a whole bunch of mediocre people into the room. The problem is the high level people who are already in the room. Now they're kind of annoyed because they're like, yo, I did all this work and held myself to these high standards so I could get here. Now look at this. They're letting these people who don't have the same standards as me get on the same level as me. Now it makes their accomplishments seem lesser because look at all these bums who are also in the room. And guess what they're going to do? Those high level people, they're going to leave. They're going to go somewhere where the standards are high. High level people do not like hanging with low level individuals. All y'all saw a couple of years ago when uh, ESPN and Netflix did that documentary about the Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan. But something Michael Jordan said all the time. 
He sometimes he said it directly and sometimes he said it indirectly was that he held himself to very high standards. What made him the best was that he held himself to higher standards than his his uh, teammates and his opponents held themselves to. He held himself to a very, very high standard of performance. And that's why he performed at the level that he did. I was uh, listening to this interview Jordan did. This is probably like maybe a year and a half ago. And this is way after he retired. He was talking to like some cigar magazine because he, Michael Jordan's a big cigar smoker. He was talking about how when he was playing, he held himself to a very, very high standard. He required a high level of focus from himself. He said, because they were asking him about how he compared to today's players. And he said, it would be unfair for you to ask any of today's players to hold themselves to the same standard that I held myself to. Because they got all these other things going on. They got all these other distractions. And he said, I held myself to a, such a high level of focus and a high level, a high level of standards that that was the, that was the key to my success. And today's players, they got too many things going on to even, for you to even think that they could hold themselves to the same that I held myself to. And this is the reason why Michael Jordan could say to his teammates or he could let his teammates know, look, you got to live up to, you got to get to this level where I'm at. Not performance level as far as like their abilities because nobody could play like him. But they had to pull as much out of themselves as he was pulling out of himself. And that's why he was the guy. And that's why he was the leader, because he had the highest standards of anybody in the room. And everybody else had to live up to his standard. So everybody understand what I'm saying here. When you lower the bar, you're going to make the winners leave. They will find another place to go where the bar is high. And when you raise the bar, what happens is the losers get eliminated. Losers do not want to be held to standards. So if you look around, any of you, you think back to your upbringing as a child, if you had a parent or parents who held you to a standard, meaning that you had to do your homework and you had to go to school, and you had to be respectful and there were certain things you had to do. You had to do chores at home and clean your room and things like that. There were certain standards that you were held to. There was a certain there was a certain you became a certain type of adult because you were held to certain standards as a child. And if you have friends who didn't have anybody holding them to standards, they kind of got to do whatever they wanted. And it seemed more fun for them because they didn't really have rules and standards to be held to. You can see what kind of adult they became. And usually, usually people who are held to high standards become high performing, high performing later on in life. And people who are held to no standards, they usually become mediocre and low performers later on in life. Now, are there exceptions? Yes. Most of the time it works out that way. Most of the time it works out that way. Remember, losers do not want to be challenged. And again, you raise the bar, you won't have to fire them. They'll just leave. Winners and losers are oil and water, folks. And winning and losing is a mindset. It's not about, it, it is about outcomes. Outcomes happen later, but it's a mindset. So if you have a winner's mindset, you don't want to hang around losers. And if you have a loser's mindset, the winners don't want you in the room. Why? Because you're bringing their average now. We all know the law of association, right? It says what? You become the average of the people you spend the most time with. So if you're hanging around people who are, if you're a higher level performer and you got some low level performers trying to hang around you, they're lowering your average. They're making you worse just by being in the room. So you want them out of there. Either you leave or they leave, but something has to change. The mediocre will find an exit when you raise the bar. Point number two, we are talking here about how to eliminate mediocrity from your life. And the strategy we're talking today is having standards. Point number two, what are standards? What does it mean when somebody says standards? Because everybody's heard the phrase before, right? What is it? What exactly does it mean? Here's what a standard is, everybody. A standard is simply an expectation. That's all it is. A standard is an expectation that is not optional. So there's one thing to have an expectation and it'd be great if it happens, but if it doesn't happen, you're okay. That's not a standard. That's a preference. A standard is an expectation that is not optional. It is mandatory. So you want anybody ask you what a standard is, is a mandatory expectation. It's something you expect of yourself and you absolutely have to do it. It's not, it's not a choice. It's not, I feel like it today. I don't feel like it tomorrow. No, it's all the time. And why does this matter? Why is this important? Because human beings live up or down to the expectations that are set upon them. Whether you set the expectations or other people set the expectations. So if you come from a place where nobody had any expectations of you, they expect you to pretty much be a loser. You most of the time people end up exactly what is expected of them. So if you have people around you who are pushing you to perform at a high level, usually you do. When you have people who are around you who are expecting you to be mediocre or worse, usually that's where you end up. So if you would like to raise your level of performance, everybody, here's the good news. You don't need another person to do it for you. You can do it for yourself. 
If you want to perform at a higher level, set higher expectations of yourself. Put higher standards on yourself. And remember what a standard is. It is a mandatory expectation. It is not an optional expectation. It is a mandatory expectation. And there's a big difference between an option and mandatory. Everybody knows what mandatory means? It means there are no exceptions. It means if you tell yourself, I got to make five phone calls a day, and it's 1130 at night, and you have a major five phone calls, you get on the phone and you make those five phone calls. That's a mandatory expectation. Optional expectation is, oh, I didn't feel like it today. I was tired today. Uh, something happened. Uh, there was a car accident across the street. I was watching TV. And my friends kept calling me. My stomach hurts. All right, those are, that's an optional expectation. A mandatory expectation is no exceptions. Here's the challenge for this. The reason why many people aren't able to raise their standards and thus cannot raise their level of performance, even though they want to, is because most human beings are incapable of setting a mandatory expectation on themselves and holding themselves accountable to it. Most people just can't hold themselves accountable to actually doing something that they say they want to do. Uh, people every day talk about what they want to do, but then they don't actually do it because people can't hold themselves accountable. Good news about that is that you don't have to be the one holding yourself accountable. Go find someone who will hold you accountable. Go hire yourself a coach. Join a mastermind, a paid one, one where you have skin in the game and you will be held accountable for actually doing what you say you want to do. That way you will perform. Now, the challenge for many people right there is that a lot of people don't ever invest in something like that. And this is the reason why most people are average. Most people are average because you don't put the mechanisms and the structures in place that force you to live up to your own alleged claimed standards because everybody here has things that you want to achieve that you haven't done yet every human being on the planet has things you want to do you have not yet done the only difference between doing it and not doing it is do you hold yourself to a mandatory expectation or is it just a preference is it just a it would be nice if that happened but you know i'll get around to it when i get around to it all right here's the a, a cold reminder for all of you one day you won't have any more time to get around to things either you're going to do it or you won't but you'll be dead or your time will be up. So are you setting yourself the standards? So if you think of places like the military or athletes with great coaches, know why they perform so well in those environments? Because in the military, there are standards that you don't have a choice but to live up to. There is no choice. You have to live up to the standard. And if you don't perform to the standard, they kick you out. That's it. There's either you perform up to the standard or you get kicked out. There's no, uh, we'll give you a little bit of grace period. We'll let you catch up. Oh, we got to we got to make an exception for this person because they had a hard life or they got other things going on or they're tired or you know, something happened to their mom three years ago. No, it's here's the standard. You either live up to the standard what's right here or you get kicked out one or the other. And when you hold yourself to that kind of standard and you're that clear about it and the line is that black and white, guess what human beings do? We all seem we all find this magical ability to step up our performance. The challenge for many of you is that you never put yourself on the line in that way. And that's why you are in a state of mediocrity because you never force yourself to perform at a high level. You want to, you talk about it is a preference. It will feel good, but you never hold yourself to that actual standard. And that's why you ain't doing it. This is why, again, why we have coaching masterminds this is why you have people out there who put these materials out there. That's why we have Work On Your Game University to help people actually hold themselves to real standards and actually live up to the standards instead of just talking about it. The challenge for a lot of people in life is that they just talk about what they want to do but don't actually do it. I talk to people every day and every day people tell me the things that they want to do and at some point we get to finding out why they're not holding themselves accountable, why there's no standard and there's no structure to make sure they live up to the standard. Remember what a standard is, folks. It's a mandatory expectation. Not a preference. A preference is I would like this. This would be nice. I want that. That's a preference. A mandatory expectation is this is what it is. And I absolutely have to do it. And there are no exceptions allowed. I don't care if it's a rainy day. I don't care if your stomach hurts. I don't care if your kid is sick. I don't care if you got fired from your job last week. The standard is a standard. And the challenge that many of you have is it's not even a challenge. It is a challenge. It's a challenge and a problem at the same time. The challenge that many of you have is that you let yourself off the hook. You are being too nice to yourself. You're soft on yourself. I wrote an article today that just came out. I posted it actually in my story yesterday. But I wrote an article that came out to my email list today. It's also on my Facebook page if you want to read it. That 
this we have created a soft culture. We got a soft society. All of society is soft these days. So sometimes some people watch uh, basketball players, NBA players, they sit out games for rest. Right. And then the fans will say, well, these players looking soft and they just sitting out games for rest. They're not even injured. They're just sitting out, not playing in games. And people say, well, these athletes are soft. Well, are the, are the athletes soft because of that? Yes, they are. But at the same time, they're just a reflection of their wider society. They're just the guys you see on TV. So they're easy to criticize because you see them on TV. But everyday people, average people, they're just as soft as the players are who are you see on TV. We got softness and we just got a soft society and a soft culture because people don't want to hold themselves to standards. So that let's not just talk about them. Let's talk about you. Moving on to point number three. We're talking how we can eliminate mediocrity from your life by holding yourself to standards. Here's the question. What are your personal standards? Do you even have personal standards? Have you ever even thought about setting personal standards for yourself? What are your personal standards? If you have personal standards, they need to be written down. They should be on paper to where you can look at them and you know exactly what they are. And any day of the week, you can pull up your personal standards on paper, look at it and say, am I actually living up to this stuff that I wrote down? Those are personal standards. The higher your own standards, the easier it will be to deal with anybody else's standards. You see, if you hold yourself to a really high standard, then it doesn't matter what standard anybody else tries to impose on you because your standards might be higher than even theirs. So hitting theirs is easy. See, it's easy to, if you're an athlete, for example, and you're always in shape and you keep yourself in great physical shape, when you go to training camp for your sports team, it won't be hard to do the conditioning workouts because you're used to doing conditioning workouts because you hold yourself to that standard in the off season. So when you get in the season, it's easy to do that. See, if you're used to holding yourself to certain standards and holding yourself to a certain account on a daily basis, when somebody else wants to hold you accountable, it won't bother you or throw you off that much. It won't make you that uncomfortable because you're used to that. That's your normal way of living. The higher your standards, the easier it is to deal with anybody else's standards. So what you need is a personal code of conduct. And I talk about it in this book you see right here called The Mental Workbook. If you're watching on Instagram, I'm pointing to it. And if you're watching on Facebook, is that work on my game.com slash work up. I'm, I'm putting in the chat for those who are watching on uh, Facebook, but the mental workbook is my book where I explain how to set standards for yourself. And you need to have these standards in place. They need to be written down and you need to be referring to and weighing yourself against these standards on a daily basis. So what is your personal code of conduct? The more you hold yourself to standards, the easier it will be for you to live the life that you want to live. The higher your standards, the easier it will be to achieve anything. You want to set your standards higher than the accomplishment that you want. So think of the accomplishments that you want to accomplish that you haven't yet achieved. And then you want to set standards that are even higher than that so that once you hit the standard, then those accomplishments will naturally occur. Everybody understand? This is why, if you know, we think about the education system, students who have high standards uh, students who are held to high standards at home by their parents usually are the best performers in school why because they're used to standards see the standards that the teacher imposes on them is nothing compared to what uh, mom and dad is making them do when they're at home that's what it means that's why you want to have high standards the higher your standards the easier it is to deal with life period michael jordan also will say this he would say i would try to push my teammates in practice as hard as i could so that when we got in the game, the game was actually easier than practice. He said if they could deal with me pushing them, then it didn't matter when we played against the New York Knicks or the Atlanta Hawks or the San Antonio Spurs or the LA Clippers because I will push them harder than anybody on any of those other teams will ever push them. So the games became easy because I made it really, really hard in practice. In other words, he was raising the bar of the standards for his teammates by pushing them harder than they were willing to push themselves. And another thing, if you know basketball from back then, but even if you don't, I'll tell you this to be true, that after all those guys who were playing with Jordan stopped playing with Jordan when he left the Bulls and retired that second time, all of those guys who were on that team went and got big contracts playing elsewhere. None of them was able to play as good without Michael Jordan than they did with Michael Jordan. And why is that? Is it because Jordan's just this magical player that made everybody look good? Well, that's part of it. But here's the main reason. The main reason why none of them was able to replicate their success without Jordan is because none of them was held to the same standard on their own that they were held when they were around Jordan every day. He was holding them to a standard that they could not maintain without him.
So this is why, again, as I said, students who have strong influences at home, they usually do better in school. Why? Because they got parents at home preparing them to do the same thing they need to do in school. Listen, do your homework, pay attention, be disciplined, follow the rules. Or they already got that at home. So when they go to school, it's not new. Let's see, people who don't have that at home, they go to school, that's new. They're not used to it, then they can't do it, and they can't perform at the same level. So this is why standards matter so much, folks. This is why you want to check your standards. You have people around you, your team, your friends, your, your family members. You want to set high standards for everybody. When everyone is living up to a high standard, the performance level rises. When the standards are low, the performance level drops. So question is, look at your performance level and ask yourself, uh, what standards led to this? What standards have led to me being who I am right now? And everybody, for everybody listening, there is an answer. It's just a matter of do you want to be honest with yourself about it? And let's recap what I just talked about. Standards being the enemy of mediocrity. We want to talk about how you eliminate mediocrity in your life. One strategy, there's a lot of ways to eliminate mediocrity, but one way I'm talking about here today is to set standards. And they need to be set in stone. And I'll explain. Let me recap. If you got a question about anything that I've said, put it in the comment section. I'll address it in a second. Let me recap my points first. Number one, when you raise the bar, you eliminate all the losers. You want to eliminate losers in your life. All you have to do is raise the bar of your standards. If you want to eliminate winners, you shouldn't ever want to eliminate winners. But if you do, all you got to do is lower the standards. Anytime any group, institution, organization, corporation, or team lowers the standards of anything, what happens is the high-level performers will leave. Because high-level people do not want to be around low-level, mediocre Low performing bums, high performers and bums do not mix. They are like oil and water. So you need to decide. Do you want high performers around you or low performers? You want high performers. You must raise the bar of performance and understand you don't need as many high performers as you need low performers. So when you raise the bar, you might only have five people around, but they're all high level performers. They can do the job of 100 low level performers. Why? Because they're that much better than them. Number two, standards are simply mandatory expectations. So anytime you think of the word standard, that's what it is. It's a mandatory expectation, not a preferential expectation. Preference is something that will be nice to have. I would like that. I want that. I'm interested. That's a preference. Mandatory is this is absolutely happening. It doesn't matter what the circumstance is. I'm absolutely doing this. That's mandatory. That's every single time, every day. doesn't matter. Human beings live up or down to the expectations that are set in front of them by their peers. This is why when you have strong influences at home growing up, you usually end up a higher performer than people who don't. Why? Because you have expectations that are set on you that other people do not have. Now, are there exceptions to this? There are a few exceptions, but for the most part, this is the rule. Exceptions prove the rule. They don't, they don't uh, refute the rule. So your peer group is people you interact with the most. And the law of association says what? You become an average of the people you spend the most time around. So if you're hanging around a bunch of bums who hold you to low expectations, guess what you're going to become? You're going to become the next bum in the group. You'll fit right in with them. You hang around high level people who hold you to high expectations. Guess what you'll become? You'll become the next high level performer and you will fit in with them. So you're going to become the people you associate with. So you need to check your associations, check your friends, check your family members, check who you're hanging with. If you're hanging with bums, you will become the next one. You hang with high level people, you become the next one of those. If you hang with mediocre people, you become the next one of those. So this is a choice. And number three, what are your personal standards? Do you have personal standards? Could you list your personal standards? You have them written down. Could you look at your personal standards on paper and know exactly what they are? Are you holding yourself accountable to those standards on a daily basis? Can you look at your personal standards and look at yourself and say, am I living up to this? Yes or no. You should be able to look at that. Even if the answer is no, at least you know that you're not living up to it. But if you don't have standards, then there's no question to ask. You can't even answer the question because there are no standards. The higher your standards, the easier it is to deal with anybody else's standards. And in my book, The Mental Workbook, I explain you how to do that. You can get the mental workbook. I'm going to put the link in um, in Instagram as well for those of you who want to get this book. is workonmygame.com slash workbook. That's where you get my book, The Mental Workbook. And that book is all about you laying out your personal standards and how you want to live and who you need to be as an individual so you can perform at your highest level. Uh, and this is, again, why students in school who have strong influences at home tend to be the best students. Why? Because they already know what it feels like to be held to standards because they get held to standards at home every day. So when they go to school, it's easy to live up to a standard of a teacher because what their parents make them do is more than what the teacher ever makes them do. Now, those who don't have any influences at home, it's harder for them to live up to the standards at school because they've never been introduced to standards before. Michael Jordan, 
The reason why he performed at such a high level because he held himself to higher standards than anybody else did. And the reason why his teammates performed so well when they played with him but couldn't play so well without him is because he held all his teammates to a very high standard. And that's why they all got paid after they played with him. And none of them could play at the same level without him that they did with him because of the standard that they were being held to. So the question from all of this, folks, is what standard are you holding yourself to? And what kind of results is it producing? So look at your life right now. Look at your situation. Look at your career. Look at your business. Look at everything that you're doing. Ask yourself, do you have the outcomes that you want right now? Most people, the answer is no. The change that you need to make is not work harder, is not uh, get more focused or be more disciplined. It's not that those things won't help. The number one thing you need to do is raise your standards. The mandatory expectations you have of yourself, when you change those, the actions, the motivation, the consistency, the discipline, the, all that other stuff automatically comes with a change in standards. So when you change your standard, that's when everything starts to work in your favor. But you must set the standard in the first place. And then you got to actually hold yourself accountable to living up to a standard. And again, keeping in mind, a standard is not a preference. It's not a it'd be nice if that happened. That's not a that's a preference. A standard is this absolutely must happen. And there are no exceptions. That's a standard. Many of you don't have any standards, and that's why your performance and your output is mediocre because you don't have standards. You just do things as you do them, and if it works, great. If it doesn't, great. But you're just, it doesn't matter. That's, that is a formula for mediocrity. So with all that said, anybody got a question, put it in the comment section. I didn't see any questions while I was talking. Work on your game, university.com. That's the place where you go. When you are ready to take the next step to work with me, I will help you lay out what your standards are, help you get clear on your principles, the strategies to Engage those principles and the tactics to execute on the strategies. All of that is happening again at workonyourgameuniversity.com. That is the link in that is the link down below in the uh, on the live on IG and is the link in the pinned comment if you're watching this on Facebook and it'll also be in the description if you're watching this on YouTube when I put this up. So let's see. This is Superwoman said, please provide some standards for a business. Some standards for a business. Well, first of all, you got to decide what your culture is going to be for your business and what you're trying to achieve in the business. And the standards for a business is about the people who are in there. So who's in charge of the business? Uh, Superwoman BW. Depends on who the person in charge is. They're the person who sets the standard. You set the tone. So just like I use Michael Jordan as an example there. You have to decide what is your you have to decide. First of all, the person in charge decides what is the culture of this business going to be? What are we trying to achieve and what standards do we need to have in place in order to achieve those outcomes and do it consistently? That's the way that you would do it in that order. So who's in charge? What are the outcomes we want to achieve and what standards are going to facilitate us achieving those outcomes? So Superwoman BW, hopefully that helps you. You can also hit me in a, in a DM if you have a, a more detailed question and I can answer that uh, better for you. But based on what you said, that's the best I can give you. And also my daily motivation text. I didn't put this in there. I'll just put that in the, in the comment section. 305-384-6894. Send me a text every, I send a text every single day that is guaranteed to keep you focused, sharp, and on point. That's called the daily motivation. You want to get that text, just text me right now at that number. And every day when that message comes out, daily motivation, you'll be getting it. Uh, let's see. Fresh Prince of WP said, Rob. Dre, I'll hit you up. Is Rob from ENS. Rob. Callan from high school. We got to connect King. Uh, send me a DM, uh, Rob. And who else we got in? All right. Anybody else got a question? Hit me in the, you can hit me in a DM or you can leave a comment. I'm going to wrap this up in about two seconds, but you can send me a text message or hit me in the, uh, hit me in a DM or you can send me a text at that number. That is work on your game university.com. That's the place where you go to work with me. That is your next step. To work with me is work on your game university. That's the only thing we are. That's the only thing we talk about is work on your game university. That is the place where you go next to work with me. All right. And we got some work that I need to get done here today. So everybody, I appreciate your time and attention. Make sure you're looking at your goals for this month, setting your goals for next month and hit me at the university or send me a text. Work on your game. You out of here.